Okay, so today I'm going to go over how to use REDCap um, to capture your study database. It's just an overview of the things that we'll talk about today. So REDCap stands for Research Electronic Data Capture. It was developed um, starting 2004 by Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was funded by the NIH um, by a grant to develop a database for academic research and cl for clinical investigators to uh, benefit translational research around the world. Um, REDCap is a pretty efficient data collection process. Um, it was released for other universities and nonprofit research institutions to use for their research. Um, currently, REDCap is used in over 1,300 country institutions worldwide. Um, in the clinical research and support program, that's what we use to collect all of our data, no matter how small the study might be. Uh, so components of REDCap are the REDCap instrument, which is analogous to the data collection form, um, the actual study database where all of your information is held. There's a query and monitoring system that is part of REDCap, and then the analysis software. Um, in the in our in our program, we use R as our analysis software. So the REDCap instrument, it's just the electronic data collection form. It's what you use for your paper data collection form. You you put what's on that paper uh, elect collection form on into REDCap. Um, it's based on the study protocol. It should be divided into logical sections. So obviously you would have like patient demographics on one form. You'd have lab values on the, another form. You wouldn't have them all on one long form. Um, it should support the st study statistical plan. So you want to definitely collect variables that you want analyzed. Here you see that you have, um, you can do your data quality on here. So REDCap has the rules that are written in red. Those are rules that are kind of embedded into REDCap already. It'll run for missing values. Um, but you can also, the rule that's written in the black at the bottom there, based on what you're collecting in your database, you can write rules uh, for REDCap to execute reports based on that one rule. So you can see the example here is an Apache score that's out of range. So if you want to just see what uh, case IDs have Apache scores that are out of range, you can just run that rule and it'll, REDCap will give you every case ID that has one that's an Apache score that's out of range. Uh, you can also track users um, so you can see who entered the data. You can see what time they did it, on what date. You can see who changed your data, who accessed it, and so it timestamps everything. So if someone, you know, is constantly putting in the wrong you know, lab value and it's always out of range and you can go back yourself and certain administrators can go back themselves and see who did this. So if you have one, you know, bad chick in the bunch, you can <laughs> point that. Yeah. Uh, so REDCap also has user security. So there's a unique, a unique login for each person. So this allows you, this also ties into allowing you to see and monitor each person's activity. And also you can, users can access different parts of the form based on their rights. So you can have someone who can only enter data or you can have someone who can delete your forms. And obviously you would know based how you develop your study and your uh, protocol who would have access to what in, what components of the REDCap database. Um, so it's based on affiliation. The data access groups are based on affiliation. Um, like I said, the different groups you have are like data entry. You have your people who run data quality. You have your administrator who builds your REDCap database. Um, and they pretty much, the administrator has all rights pretty much, I'd say, over REDCap. Uh, when you're entering your data into REDCap, consistency is important. You want to validate your the information that you're entering into REDCap against the case report form. You want to make sure that you have your proper format of your dates and time. So if you're, especially if you're collecting time, it's probably best to enter it in 24-hour format. If you are collecting dates, I know a lot of, especially like Paula said, when you're doing international studies, a lot of international countries use, put the year first, and then they put a day and a month in their, you know, in America we put the month, day, year. So you want to make sure that throughout your form that you have what how you want your date entered into there. 
Also, uh, REDCap, you want to make sure your answers are logical. REDCap has the ability for uh, branching logic. So for this question, obviously, a male can't be pregnant. But to, <laughs> to, an to answer the question, if female, if the answer for if the patient's a female, then it would show up, it would branch off, and you, it would give you the question, is this person pregnant or not? Um, so rules can be applied to the entry uh, of your data. So it could have that you have to, a required field like Paula was saying, you can have your radio buttons, uh, you can have like a required field for them. So a warning will appear for a person entering the data that, hey, this is required, you know, do you want to override this? Uh, also, uh, the va like verify the range of values the person who sets up your REDCap database can have where the, if a value is entered that's out of range, they have to go through several steps to, to validate that, yes, this is an acceptable value. This is what I want to put in the database. So then um, when you log your data and you see someone constantly putting in out of range, you can see who did that. <laughs> like I said, um, dates, make sure that they're consistent throughout. Uh, make sure that you use 24-hour format, especially if you want to um, track time of the ED visit, because you don't want to, using 24-hour also allows you to eliminate the extra process of having to click, was it AM or PM? Um, when you want to see, like, length of stay for in hours, you want to also have that time in your format. So if you're doing date of admission, obviously you want to put date of admission and then you want to put time of arrival and so forth. Uh, for unknown years, a lot of times, especially like with birthdays, you know, when someone might not know when what year they were born in a lot of foreign countries, they don't keep up with that thing, with, you know, date, the years of birth. You want to know, you want to have it laid out in your data dictionary. So in what what are we doing in cases of unknown years? You can put, you know, 000, 1900. So that way, whenever your statistician is analyzing, they know that these birthdays that are popping up with, ninth, that, you know, they were born in 1900, that's an unknown year. Um, also, make sure your start date or your dates correspond with the study start date. Obviously, you wouldn't want to have, like, a date of admission to the hospital way before your study started. So, like Paula was saying, text fields, they get messy. This is actually a screenshot from analysis that we did on um, a text field box. As you can see for sepsis, it recognizes sepsis as two different variables because one is the S is capitalized in one of them and the S is lowercase in the other. For pneumonia, it recognizes it as two separate variables because there's a space after the second pneumonia. Uh, for seizures, as you can see, the first two are counted separate because there's one has an uppercase, one has a lowercase, and then the third and fourth one, there's words, there's text after the words. So those are four separate variables. And so when that spits out, you know, you might get 70 different ways of saying one thing. Uh, so types of data that are in REDCap, you could put numeric, which are continuous variables. Um, if needed, make sure you have the proper labels. So if you're measuring your, you know, creatinine levels, make sure that you have what, uh, what label that they would need on there. So coding levels for binary uh, data, we usually code one zero. For uh, sex, we use one for, well, for the most part, we use one for male, zero for females, but obviously if we're looking at something like ovarian cancer, you would use one for the group that's most is at risk. So for that particular study, we would code females as one, males as zero. Uh, and then for yes, no, it's pretty same thing. You use For the most part, we use one for yes, zero for no's. And uh, that's also very important to have consistent throughout your study. For multiple choice levels, REDCap will code one to, to the n number of choices. So if you have six different choices, it'll give you, you know, six different levels of that variable. Also, it's very important to code for if the variable is unknown. This is important for analysis so that we know that the data is not just missing. So we don't go back to people collecting data and say, hey, a bunch of this information is missing, you know. We know when we're doing our statistical analysis to code that these variables are just unknown, we'll just drop them. So the data dictionary, this is 
So if you use REDCap to design your your collect data collection form, the data dictionary is already created. Uh, it's automatically generated. It has the variable name, the labels, and the descriptions. It tells you what type of the coding levels for each variable, and then also it shows all your branch branching logic. This is important because when you go back and you're doing your analysis, and you see that there's a bunch of information missing for the example Paula gave with the COPD and the steroids. If people weren't, uh, if there was a bunch of missing information for steroids, well, we can go back and look and see that, well, they were only given this question if the answer to, if they had a history of COPD, if that answer was yes. So from REDCap, you can also download your data. You, there's several options for downloading your data. You can download all the data, all fields, all records. You can select reports based on specifications and variables. So if you just want to see date of admission, you can run a report based on just your date of admission. Uh, you can ad include identified or de-identified de data depending on who wants this report. So if they don't have approval to see, you know, uh, protected health information, you can select who, what kind of, what kind of data you want to download. Uh, you can also export data directly from REDCap. You can, um, these are the different packages that you can export it to. We use R, like I said, but if you, you know, if you're running reports for someone in data quality, you can export your records or your report using Excel. And so the takeaway from this is just REDCap is a very useful tool in, for your research. It's a place to store all your data. It's a place that you can go to and see, you know, your data dictionary. You can run reports in there. Uh, consistency is key, though. It's very important that all of your, you know, everyone that's doing your data entry, they know how to collect the data. They know, you know, what to transfer from the paper case report form to the REDCap database. It's very important to verify and validate your data. Like Paula said, if someone, you know, if you're only enrolling people that are over 18 into your study, it's very important the person in entering that data into REDCap knows that and is only entering people who are over 18. And then um, you, REDCap helps you to produce data that's as perfect as possible. We know nothing's ever p perfect, but we want to get it as close to perfect as we can.